Good day, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, this is Bill McCabe, and uh, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different today. We, we've talked about doing sword forms and about some of the sword technique and also two-man sword sets, but uh, I've had people uh, uh, send me some video uh, and also visit with me uh, doing some sword forms, and there's one thing I realized I failed to talk about uh, to, this, to the uh, degree that it was necessary to do so. Uh, the essence of a sword is uh, having the sword do the work that it's intended to do. And, and basically that means it has to be cutting. And so long as the sword is properly cutting, then everything in front of it is either being, being destroyed if it's an attacker or it's avoiding the cuts. But uh, it takes a great deal of focus, uh, practice, uh, and uh, discipline to cut uh, uh, effectively with the sword. So we're going to talk about ways that you can develop that skill within yourself. Now most people out there don't have actual swords or actual fighting swords. They have wooden swords, uh, boken, uh, or even just use sticks or canes in lieu of a sword until the point in time comes when they can afford something. So we'll talk about two things that are readily available in the marketplace and uh, show you how best to develop uh, uh, practice regimen for yourself to develop uh, the appropriate skills. This is a typical boken which you can buy at any martial arts store. Uh, as you look at it, you can see it's about four feet long, roughly four feet long. Uh, we're not going to measure it today. And uh, it uh, generally they're made out of oak, uh, imported from the Orient. And These are pretty substantial, and they actually have a weight that's similar to the weight of, a, of an actual sword. So in that sense, they're excellent for practice. They develop a lot of physical strength, and they develop the same muscles that you need to work an actual sword. So if you don't have a sword, and you want to develop the feel of working with a real sword, these are an excellent choice. But there's one thing they do not have, and we're going to go to another specimen sword, and I'll explain a bit more in just a second. This is a sword that has come into the marketplace in the past three or four years. And this is a practice sword, of course, and it's made out of bamboo. Now, what's significant about this is that it's designed to resonate the way a real sword would when it's used. So this will give you an audible feedback that will help you perfect your sword technique. And for example, if I take the first sword and do a downward strike, you hear a whoosh. That doesn't tell you anything in particular. So for example, I could be going edge forward, swinging down, you hear a whoosh. I could turn it upside down and be using it the direct opposite way it should be used, and it sounds almost exactly the same. So you don't have any type of audible feedback that's telling you if your technique is proper. I can do it sideways. It sounds almost the same as forward, as I, as I do it sideways. You can see what I'm doing here. So you have this sword, the new variation. And again, take a good look at it. These are available in the marketplace today. They're made out of bamboo. They have an edge. And to deal with the, the edge of a sword, an actual sword, when you swing it rapidly, it cuts through the air, and the edge splits the air, just like an airplane wing. The air wraps around the sword, meets on the back side of the sword, and when the air molecules collapse on each other on the back side, they make a sound that's like a chirp. In other words, if the edge of the sword is cutting perfectly into the target as it's supposed to, and if it's a clean hit without the blade swerving to the side in any kind of fashion, you'll hear a chirp. And an example would be Okay, now that's the kind of sound that you're looking for all the time. Now if I'm slightly off, for example, let's be way off. If I'm sideways, nothing. If I'm backwards, nothing. From the correct way, 
you'll hear the sound. If I'm slightly off, slight angle, you'll be, whoops, oops, sorry. I do that about uh, 10 times a day, so maybe you'll see it again. In any event, if I'm even slightly off from perpendicular, I lose the sound. So you can see what a great practice technique this is for cleaning up your cuts. So that's what's happening here. I lose the chirp, I lose the feedback if I'm slightly off. So having said that, uh, I'm gonna switch over to my a colleague, Steve Tilka, he's going to uh, demonstrate four or five different types of cuts which will enable you to develop a practice regimen for yourself to perfect your technique. Okay, okay the first thing we're going to do is, is uh, we'll have Steve uh, do five repetitions of each side and, and uh, because the objective here is for you to have a way of practicing on your own and to have uh, enough substance from what you get here to create your own regimen, we'll have Steve demonstrate the overhead cuts first, right and left, doing five repetitions each side. Okay, Steve, you can start whenever you wish. And actually, right and left would be the same. And in this case, there we go. And just hold your position there, Steve. I'm going to talk about hand position for a second. And we'll raise this up just a bit so we can see this. If you're right-handed, uh, as Steve is and uh, most people are, the power hand as you're holding the sword is your right hand, and the steering hand is your left hand. And you never get those mixed up. You're delivering the power with the right hand, and the subtle manipulation of the sword is accomplished with the left hand. So as he goes back and does the overhead downward strike in slow motion, just observe what's happening with the hands. Okay, now again, just keep continuing the motion, and I'll show another view of that. So you can see as he goes down, and this would be like the woodcutter strike, on the rebound on a recoil, the left hand is guiding it back up so that it's recoiling uh, but still with correct balance and correct grip. Okay, now do a couple fast. Okay, and it's the combination of power in the right hand and control of the left hand which makes it work. Now we're going to have Steve uh, demonstrate the diagonal cuts, five from the right side, five from the left side. Final demonstration will be horizontal cuts, five from the right. And five from the left. Okay, thank you, Steve. And uh, getting back to myself here just for a second. You can make this as complicated as you want in your own practice. You know, we're just trying to give you the idea, the, the, the basic seed that you can plant and develop in any way that you see fit to benefit your own practice. But whatever you do, uh, if you're doing any type of sword form, make sure that you develop the ability to do a clean cut. Because at the end of the day, if you're working in sword forms, you want for your sword technique to be effective in an actual situation. Uh, and whether it's a sword or any other type of striking weapon, if you're hitting clean and if you're doing the strike properly, all of the energy is being delivered to the point of attention, and that's the whole objective of the martial arts. So thanks once again for visiting with us. We'll have more for you in the future.